everybody, if you will please mute yourself um, while I'm speaking to avoid echo and, and disturbances while I'm doing the presentation. And if you would please save your questions for the end and um, ask your questions using the chat button, we would appreciate it. Um, also, I want to make uh, sure that everybody understands that this meeting will be recorded. Um, this is the University Drive Improvements Phase 1 project, and this is the second community meeting that we have. My name is Raul Lopez. I am the project manager, and I work for the Transportation Public Works Department in the City of Fort Worth. I want to acknowledge uh, the presence of uh, Council Member Anne Zeta. She's in the crowd. Um, Zeta, would you like to say a few words? I just want to thank everybody for participating. This is a project that's been long awaited. Um, we've been discussing it, I think, since before I was even in office. So I know that um, many are excited to see these improvements come, and I appreciate everybody's attendance, and I'm happy to be here. Thanks. Thank you very much. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I think most of us are aware of what uh, the project location, but just to sort of uh, revisit that, it's been a while since we had the first community meeting. Um, this phase of the project goes from just south of West Rosedale, um, flyover over University, uh, down to the Trinity River Bridge, which is just shy of the Trinity River Bridge, not included in the bridge. Uh, just to give you sort of revisit how the project was conceived, there is a Community Design Center in Fort Worth, CDCFW. Uh, this is a nonprofit organization that was um, conceived a few years ago, and their mission is to enhance quality of uh, the communities in Fort Worth. It's made up of architects, transportation engineers, planners, and in general visionaries that kind of look at um, uh, areas that could um, uh, improve with uh, certain kinds of uh, facilities or, or lacking certain kind of facilities. Uh, they, this is their pilot project, actually. They identified University Drive as a very important spine connecting so many cultural uh, and attractions uh, uh, of Fort Worth. And so uh, the objective of the project is to improve the corridor and elevate it to the standards that it actually represents as the gateway for all this um, venues and cultural attractions in, in um, Fort Worth. So these are some of the um, venues and culture and um, resources that we have along uh, connect, connected by the University Drive corridor. Um, so the CDC studied uh, ran a study in 2016 and identified areas of improvement for for the entire corridor, and I'll show you what the entire corridor is, is uh, here in a second. And so um, some of the points that they identified uh, as uh, needed improvements were, number one, traffic and pedestrian uh, safety. It has declined over many years. Um, the corridor has a car-centric look to it. It looks like a, like a highway. And so, um, it, it, it needs uh, improvements to enhance all the modes of transportation, whether it's pedestrian, bicycle, transit. Aesthetically, it doesn't really represent the, the gateway that it actually is to the different um, resources and attractions. And it's lacking signage uh, to direct people to the right uh, places where they're trying to get to. So this is the University Drive corridor that the CDC studied. Um, so you can see ex it extends on the north side from Trail Drive uh, all the way down south to Kenzie Street, which is just north of TCU. Um, phase one is what we, they refer to as the commercial core. Phase, we have already identified phase two, and that is in the works in the initial stages, um, in the funding stages. Phase two is actually the section immediately north of phase one from Trail Drive to just north of 30. So that, um, we have a project identified already. We are project number. We have a project manager assigned. Uh, we are negotiating or are actually um, uh, dealing with COG, the Council of Governments, to finalize the funding 
and actually um, beginning of 2021, we should be able to get the project started, uh, procure a professional design professional and get the project activity started. And then the rest of the product, the rest of the quarter will be future projects as funding becomes available. So phase one limits again uh, from uh, the West Roseville flyover to just shy of a bridge, but it also includes old university. So we always talk about university drive, but it also includes improvements along old university. So this is just a, a picture, aerial picture of what the existing conditions or the existing uh, old um, university drive looks like. So you can see it's a vast expanse of asphalt, seven lanes wide asphalt um, street uh, with no median and, and basically just no amenities, very, uh, very poor or poor on pedestrian facilities. Um, and there are no bicycle facilities. Uh, same thing for all university drive. It's a very wide street. It doesn't need to be that wide. So, of course, we have some constraints that we need to live with. Um, this is what I call an enhancement project. This is not the uh, typical arterial project where we're going to go in and demolish the existing road and reconstruct it all together. And that's not what we're doing. Um, what we are doing, so um, what we'll be doing is basically enhance what's out there, and I'll give you a little more information about that in a second. Uh, we have limited right-of-way, and we're not obtaining the whole lot of right-of-way other than to accommodate um, transit stops. So we need to work within the right existing right-of-way in most cases. Uh, the project will not add or reduce number of through lanes. So there are six lanes today, through, six through six through lane stay. When the project is complete, there will still be six through lanes. And of course, the limited funding will always have to deal with that. So to the scope, there are three or four major elements on the project. Um, one of the most important elements on the project is to improve safety. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a center median uh, on this upper left and picture here, the center region is designated by, by the lime green um, shapes. Another element of the project is to provide um, pedestrian facilities and safe, um, safe uh, um, pedest uh, crosswalks, crosswalks across the university. And we will be providing a traffic signal of at Collinsworth. Uh, another element of the project is the um, construction or addition of hardscape and landscape facilities within the corridor to make it uh, basically aesthetic, aesthetically uh, pleasing. And this is just a sample picture. Continuing on the scope, this is all University Drive. So all University Drive, we're going to put it on a little diet. It's referred to as a road diet. Um, so, um, what we're doing on all the University Drive is too wide of a street for the traffic that it carries. And so, we're going to in, implement a bicycle lane, which is designated on this picture by the lime green line work. We're also going to be implementing a traffic, a, I'm sorry, a parking lane on either side of the road. And we are going to be extending a few segments of the sidewalks as shown here in blue. The blue line work uh, designates the extension of the sidewalk. So the idea of um, the work that we're doing at all the universities is, is pretty hard to get on foot or on bike from University Drive to Trinity Park or um, the Botanic Gardens or any of those um, attractions north of the I-30 um, uh, interstate because the railroad bridges are pretty, um, the railroad bridges are a constriction of Old University Drive. If you try to get through from Old, South Old University, I mean, South University to North University, um, the sidewalk is probably about a foot wide. And that's not actually a sidewalk. Technically, a sidewalk is just a section of concrete. So we want to discourage people from taking that route, and we're going to, we're, we're the idea is to, of course, uh, bicycle users and pedestrians to 
go up Old University, connect to Trinity Park on the north, and then if they want to get back to Old University, there are trails that will bring them back to Old University. I mean, sorry, to University Drive. As far as the uh, scope of the project, we will also be improving the transit stop. Right now, what, um, what's out there is basically a concrete bench on the grass throne and grass strip. Uh, those are not, obviously, they're not ADA compliant, so we will be constructing ADA compliant um, facilities. So what this, the, 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 the deal with Trinity Metro is that we will be constructing the concrete work with the approach and the apron in front of the shelters, and then Trinity Metro will come and install the shelters themselves. We're also going to be installing um, wayfinding signage, and we will be working with the CDC on where the signs should go and also uh, what, um, what attractions they should feature. And they're going to look similar to these. They're going to be similar to what the ones that are in downtown and the structures. I believe there's some of those. So this is just sort of an overall um, aerial view of the project altogether, project scope altogether. And we, this is so, just so you guys uh, can see uh, the center median and so everything in perspective. But I'm going to I'm going to be walking, uh, zooming a little closer. Uh, statement by segment and discussing what we're going to be doing there. So the center meeting is designated by the time that the pen um, shapes here, and this is this colorful colorful um, islands. They're literally islands. Is where we're going to have uh, landscape because of the necessity of having left turn lanes along the corridor. That uh, basically limits the, uh, the median width to a minimum of five to six width, in some cases four foot wide, so we cannot implement landscape in, in those areas. So we are limited to landscape um, at the north end between uh, University Park Village and Collinsworth, this little area here, and also uh, just south of Collinsworth. So just to zoom in, this is a close-up of the north end. This is the uh, West Rosedale um, overpass. And so this is where we're going to have an island of landscape. Um, going southbound, there will be a left turn lane for the Pancake House. And then going northbound, there will be a left turn lane that will provide access, left turn access to the gas station. Again, the blue is designating the sidewalk improvements. It's the sidewalk improvements, again, where we're not going to improve the whole corridor. We're not going to take all of the uh, sidewalk out of the, the entire corridor and reconstruct it. We're just basically widening where we, where, where we can, where we see the opportunity to widen the sidewalk to provide um, higher capacity, pedestrian capacity. As we move on south to the University Park Village and all University intersection, Again, the center meeting is designated by the TAN shapes. Uh, we will be installing a new signal at Old, um, Old University Drive. And we are eliminating the crosswalk along the north side because we have um, identified that that's a major safety concern. I believe there was a pedestrian hit there uh, in the past. And so we are eliminating that crosswalk. But we are providing a crosswalk along the south side this is one of the enhancements. Those crosswalks are going to be stamped concrete, so it's going to give the, the uh, corridor a little character. Uh, all of the uh, curb ramps will be upgraded to uh, meet ADA or accessibility standards. So as we move on south, this is kind of a special case. Um, Ultimately, uh, there will be a median all the way from north to south with only median openings at the intersections and the left turn lanes that I've already discussed. Uh, but in an interim basis, we have 
Um, talk to Trademark. Trademark is the owner of these properties, both uh, West Bend and I believe the old Hawthorne sites, Hawthorne Suite sites. So we, they reached out to us and we have agreed to provide a temporary left turn bay to access uh, the West Bend development on the uh, east side of uh, Old um, University Drive. So this, this is again temporary and, and the agreement is that we will allow that to stay uh, for five years after the completion of construction of the project or at the time when the West, uh, West Bend South development, the old Hawthorne Suite site is redeveloped, at which time they will be able to provide a driveway at Collinsworth and make it a four-way intersection and then provide access to this site um, for uh, southbound traffic, uh, southbound left-turning traffic. And then at that time, they will close that, they will bridge that gap there, they will close that gap there. Uh, the, the reason we're doing that is because the um, allowance of a left turn, lane, left turn lane here is counter to the objective of the project and it represents a safety concern, left turn, I mean left turn traffic here going northbound and, and in left turn traffic here that's too close to that, those two movements are too close to each other and uh, we want to limit the uh, the uh, safety concerns um, right there. So this is actually the ultimate condition, basically, at the time when they either redevelop that site or five years later, we will go ahead and or we'll, we'll, we're working in, on an agreement with Trademark so that they will actually, at the time they construct these or five years later, they will actually fill in the gap and construct the ultimate improvements, which is basically a solid median and then landscape improvements um, in the center. Again, we are installing a traffic signal at Collinsport, and there will be crosswalks, but there won't be a crosswalk along the south side. Again, that's because of safety concerns. There is a visibility concern coming off uh, the Trinity River Bridge. And the third landscape outline would be just immediately south of Collinsworth. The existing uh, left turn lane um, providing access to River Run will remain. And of course, there will be a left turn lane uh, for Collinsworth going northbound. This is a close up of what we're going to be doing on Old University. So the the hatch in here represents basically a buffer between the travel lane and the bike lane. So the bike lane is going to be the, the little tick marks here that you can barely see. Those are the, uh, the T-shaped uh, tick marks that we, we uh, put on the, on the uh, surface to designate the different parking spaces. So that's, that designates, designates the parking lane on either side of the road, and then immediately just into that, there will be a uh, bike lane, and there will be a three-foot three buffer, and then we will have the uh, two lane, the two lanes, uh, uh, traffic lanes. The blue again designates the extension of sidewalks to provide connectivity to uh, the Trinity Trails, and we are providing a uh, crosswalk uh, right at this point, just north of that uh, circle um, to connect to the Trinity Trails again. And then this blow here designates the connection of the bike lanes to the Trinity Trails. So this is the proposed landscape. These are the three islands. Starting with this one, this is the one at the very north, just south of Rosedale, of West Rosedale. And so this is sort of the color palette that has been um, proposed for the landscape on the hardscape. Um, I think I can zoom in here. Oops. So this is going to be, uh, there's going to be a uh, brick paver, uh, sort of a perimeter around the islands. And then we're going to have, of course, landscape in the center. So they're similar 
in the, in concept. Uh, they're just the, they just vary in, in, in size. So this is the one. This is the one that's going to be ultimately constructed between Collins, I mean Collinsworth and uh, University Park Village, and this one would be the one between Collinsworth and the bridge. And this is actually uh, pictures of the plants that are being so, um, have been chosen to to um, implement landscape. So we have stacies and we have uh, skull caps. And these are the different uh, uh, colors that they take on different seasons. So I think this is going to be really, really nice, and it's going to give the corridor different, different character. Project cost: the construction budget is 2.4 million. Um, overall budget for the project is 4 million, and we are still within budget. As far as schedule is concerned, we just completed the preliminary design at, at the end of the summer, so we're, uh, we're now working on what we call the 90% uh, milestone, which is basically almost complete, but not quite. Um, we hope to have 100% plans and construction um, contracts drafted by the end of the, this year or, or January 2021. We will start right away acquisition um, within the next few weeks, we're just waiting on that right away acquisition um, uh, meet and balance descriptions to be provided to us so we can provide it to uh, property management for them to uh, approach the property owners. Utility clearance, we should be able to start that in January and it shouldn't take any longer than um, six months, maybe six, seven months at the most. Both right away and utility clearance are not anticipating major. Um, delays caused by that, and that's why I'm putting this construction schedule, I mean this uh, project schedule on the slide here. Uh, if, 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 we, if we were to basically go by our standard uh, project schedules, it would be a lot longer, but because the right-of-way acquisition that we're doing is just uh, a few um, strips here and there basically to facilitate the construction of the bus, um, of the bus stops, that's not going to impede us from starting construction of the median or uh, striping along old university. So that shouldn't delay that, that portion of the work. So we are, we are confident that we should be able to start construction around uh, summer of 2021. Same thing with utility clearance. We don't anticipate a whole lot of utilities to be moved because we're not winding the road. We're basically um, constructing a median and there may be a few ground boxes here and there that may, may have to be uh, relocated to, uh, to avoid conflicts, but I don't anticipate that to be a major delay. We will have, of course, a, uh, another community meeting, and that would be when we are ready to go to construction, and of course, that will be announced to, to everybody just like we did this time. And with that, that is my contact information. And so I'm going to go ahead and open it up for questions now. If you'll please post your questions in the chat, we would appreciate it. I'm going to give everybody a chance to, if you're like me, you can Talk faster than you can type. That's me. Well, we have a pretty small group as well. So if, if anyone would rather just ask the question, um, you know, just put it in the, in the chat. You'd like to talk and we'll unmute you one at a time so we don't talk over each other. Uh, we also have one call in person as well with whom I can unmute. Um, can you mute him, Jeff? I don't think I can. Uh, I have unmuted whoever called in on the phone. The last two digits are 82. 82, yes. I've, I've unmuted you if you'd like to talk or ask a question. I don't have any questions at this time. All right, thank you. 
Uh, we've got some questions coming in now that will. Okay. So, one of the questions is, what are the impediments to placing trees in the median? And if it is cost, then there is the possibility of allowing donations to cover costs. So, the hardship of putting trees in the median is not cost. The hardship of putting trees, trees in the median is the fact that uh, what, where we're building the median is a paved over area that has been paid for many, 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 many years and it's over consolidated. The, the, under, the subsoils are under, over consolidated and we, we discussed this at length with our parks department or, you know, tree experts in the parks department and um, they thought that it would take, uh, and actually our landscape um, architect as well, they thought that it would take uh, excavating anywhere from eight to ten feet to be to remove all that over consolidated um, soils and import uh, proper soils for the trees to be able to take take root and, and establish themselves so that's that's the part that makes it hard to plant trees on, on the in the median so we decided to go with the sort of the short uh, slow low profile landscape Another question says, when we met last year, I asked about the extra traffic cost by the median. You mentioned sending it to Rogers, which is already overcrowded. Is that still the plan? I'm not sure I understand why the median would cause extra traffic. I would assume, I would assume you mean that the, the uh, median would cause basically concentrate lectern movement um, at the intersections. I think that's what it's meant by that. And I'm not sure why we'd go down Rogers. Not, re not really sure if that's a construction concern during construction. Well, I'm going to go ahead and un unmute Mr. Garcia. Yeah, um, can so you unmute Mr. Discuss Garcia it. to clarify that question? Yeah, he's Hi, he's yes. Okay. Last year, when we met about this at the zoo, um, talked about how with all of the entrances available right now to University Park Village, there are already times that traffic backs up into the number one lane going northbound on University. And as we reduce the available entrances from northbound University to University Park Village, I can't imagine that it's going to do anything besides increase increased traffic. And last year when we met, you talked about that you hadn't really studied the traffic patterns yet um, and that you would expect for more people to go down Rogers Road, um, which again, if you drive down Rogers Road trying to go northbound at five o'clock, heaven forbid there's an 18 wheeler coming off of the route of the rail yard trying to go that direction also. The traffic already backs up beyond the jack in the box, sometimes even beyond the northernmost rear entrance to University Park Village. And I can't imagine how much worse it will get if there are more cars added to that. I'm trying to open Google Maps here, if you'll bear with me. So Aaron, Aaron, are you there? Uh, Jeff, can you unmute Aaron Fricky? Yes. He's unmuted. I'm here. <clears throat> can we talk a little bit about um, traffic? Um, well, I don't, uh, people will go down Rogers Road. Um, if they want to get out of the University Park Village parking lot, they can go out of uh, out the backside and go down Rogers Road and go down to Collingsworth to come out that intersection, or even go down. I'm not. I'm, that's not what I mean. I mean, it's like traveling northbound on University. Anybody that is trying to just get north of I-30 right now, 
there's all, there's already an ungodly amount of traffic and there's times that I'm trying to go north of like I'm trying to go east on I-30 or north of I-30 from where Hofbrau was and the traffic backs up already to Old University Drive and as as we back cars up in the in the center lane like the the leftmost lane of Northbound University I can't imagine that that traffic's going to do anything but increase and when we've talked about this last year, when this project was supposed to start in June, we y'all discussed that you would expect there to be overflow traffic going northbound on Rogers. With people trying to get around the whole area. So, so I, I don't recall, uh, Mr. Grigley, I don't recall exactly, you know, that conversation, but what I can tell you is so we're not reducing capacity in all university. We're not taking lanes away. Yes, we are taking a left, the left turn movements out. We're concentrating on certain points, but the the, the, the stacking distance that we're providing for for um, traffic to basically queue on those uh, left turn movements has been designed to accommodate the, the volume that is expected to make left turn lanes. Yeah, well, it just we're going from three entrances to one, and the entrance by Easy oftentimes is backed up four or five cars. The entrance at the light is backed up four or five cars. The entrance at the Apple Store and Starbucks is backed up four or five cars. And now you put all of those into one. I don't think that they're all going to fit in that one turn line. So that that has been accounted for in the in the in the traffic study, and that's what I'm trying to to explain. Yeah. Okay. There All right. Well, when we met last time, there had not been a traffic study yet. Yeah, we 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 completed a traffic study, and the left turn bays are uh, the left turn bay at old at old University Drive, and, and as it turns onto University Park Village, is long enough to accommodate the the queue that's anticipated based on the traffic study. So that's all being looked at. We, we realize it's going to, you know, both queues are going to be longer because we're concentrating the left turns into a single location versus multiple locations. Um, It's repairing, replacing the triangular meeting at Old University and Rollsdale as part of the plan. I know we've talked about that, Michael, uh, many times. Whoops, I'm going the wrong way. Aaron, are we including this? I think we were. At one point, we were going to include it, but we didn't. Um... We didn't receive a uh, direction of putting people into that uh, walking area underneath Rosedale. We were basically right. going to take people across that lane and put people in that uh, that underpass underneath Rosedale. And so there is not an intention on putting a sidewalk underneath there. So we we backed off of doing that until until funding or a project comes up to address that uh, a place to get to from this Rosedale area to the Trinity Trail. Right. And the other the other catch to that is, and Aaron, you correct me, we, we're talking about this. Is this text us right away? Correct. Yeah. So the other catch to that is that Texas has changed their permitting um, processes. And now they're requiring what they call a LOSA, a local on system um, agreement. And those require probably I'm going to say nine to ten months to get through. For what little improvements we are proposing, we might be proposing. So we we would not want to delay the project by eight or nine months to get a permit from from uh, Texas on that. Yeah, the, the, the cost of removing that all of that soil and bringing, you know, uh, appropriate soil is, is very significant. So that, that's what's prohibiting the addition of trees. Raul, another um, addition to that comment was um, the 
infrastructure, when you water trees in that median, uh, in order to get them going for about the first few years, you're going to have a lot of water in that. And with the uh, subsoils and the compaction that's been happening, or that's happened over the, the decades of this uh, thoroughfare, uh, we have to put in some type of um, sub drainage, sub, sub yeah. uh, structure for drainage. That's correct, and that will require taking all that all the way across to the closest inlets or storm drain. Yes. So that will require tearing, tearing off the pavement, and so, yeah, that, that it basically cost compounds. Will there, will there be marked bike share lanes on University Drive leading on to all University Drive? No, the answer is to that is no. Uh, bicycles will have to remain on the sidewalk until they get to all University Drive. There's there's no room to ride a bike lane on, on University Drive on University Drive. Currently, the signal timing for pedestrians at university and old university is so short that pedestrians almost don't have time to get across. Yes, the uh, timing will be will be uh, redesigned basically with the addition of the signals. There will be new signals and uh, uh, obviously uh, pet buttons to get across and uh, new timing. Yeah, we realize that pork chop is uh, really bad. We we can look into that. I'm not sure, uh, but if it takes that long to get it approved by TechDot, we may have to we may have to put that up and maybe maybe until the, until the next phase, phase two. But I want to throw a caveat in there because if, for phase two, we're getting uh, federal funding, and federal funding basically we need to stay within the limits that we, we've uh, designated for that federal funding, so we can't go beyond those limits. So we, we can look into that and see if we can accommodate that. <clears throat> Is the goal of the project to increase pedestrian traffic between West Bend and UPV? Do we anticipate, whoops, I lost my track here. Is the goal of the, tra the project to increase tra pedestrian traffic between West Bend and UPV? The answer to that is the goal of the project is to provide more pedestrian mobility either across from one side or the other or along the corridor. We anticipate people walking from HG Supply to Banana Republic. I don't know where HG Supply is. Can you unmute, uh, Mr. Garcia, Jeff? It's uh, it's to the right uh, along the river. HG Supply is. To the, to the right yeah, HG Supply together. Yeah. HG Supply is in the the easternmost part of West Bend, along the river, and Banana Republic is in the westernmost part of UPV. I'm just wondering if this, if if there is a need for this if if people are going to use it, if we're solving a problem that exists. The, the, the intent, yeah, the intent is to promote uh, pedestrian traffic across the street, yes. So if you go, if you're going to shop on UPV and you want to go have lunch at uh, West Bend, you can, instead of moving your car, you can go across the street. Intent yeah, is my to question is, vehicular traffic my question is, is, I'm sorry. Is that is is my question is is that a real is that going to be a realistic expectation of people that they are going to walk across the whole parking lot and across the street and across another parking lot instead of just moving their car? That is what we're trying to promote. Yeah. Okay. That's what we're, we're trying to promote, promote it, but we don't know that it's okay. So we're hoping that it's going to happen. Right. Right. Okay. And it's not happening today because it's just we there's there's no refuge to go from one end to the other. You have to go across seven lanes. The city of Fort Worth is has become really strong on uh, what we call complete streets um, project and uh, active transportation. 
So we are promoting mm -hmm. all those other means of transportation, um, okay. you know, in addition to uh, the traditional vehicular uh, transportation. This is our one chance for a long, long time to be able to get trees into the median, and it is the cost of the solar removal and drainage. I believe there are property owners in the area that might contribute the funds to knew the cost. Well, Michael, that's a possibility, but um, I would really need the CDC's help on that um, because we don't have additional funding. If you think you can get, um, you know, additional funding, external funding in a timely manner, we would, we would definitely be uh, able to consider it. We just don't want to delay the project by a year, a year and a half, waiting for people to make up their minds to, to fund the project. Um, there was in, initially at the, the beginning of the project, we talked about can we do uh, an adopt, you know, adopt a median type program? Well, those things are voluntary. We cannot just go knock on doors and say, did you want to, do you want to maintain this median? Um, we have to have somebody to come forward and, uh, and uh, volunteer. So, you know, if the CDC can help with that, trying to uh, persuade the different organizations or different groups and, and to uh, augment the funding, that, that would be ideal. I would love to see trees out there, trust me. Now it looks a lot better. Roll Actually, another comment. Yeah. Go ahead. Who is um, that? Roll, this is Aaron Fricky. Another um, another thing we discussed about the trees, we had a, a, a big discussion as to whether we're going to do trees or uh, landscaping at the bottom, uh, low low bushes and shrubs. And one thing about the trees was um, due to the city thoroughfare plan and the requirements, there was uh, there was a setback from the intersections and from the nose of any uh, left turn lanes that it really minimized where we could put trees. And in the right. end, we we only had about four trees we could put in the uh, in the median. It wasn't like we were going to get a whole row of trees. That that's true. So it, I think we can't lose perspective of the fact that you know we were envisioning a, a a sort of a tree line median, but that's not what we can achieve here because we only have three little pockets where we can put trees. And like Aaron said, they need to be set back um, a number of feet from the uh, from the uh, median cuts. I'm going to open the presentation here. So So again, these are the only three spots. Oh, let me that right there. This right here. So this this might be able to to sustain trees, and that's probably about a 150 to 100 linear feet. But we can't we can't plant you know all along the full length because um, of the spatial constrictions. You know the, the the median will probably be able to plant maybe a few along the wider section of of that that area, and then we might be able to plant just a few here. So long as they're not in conflict with this left turn movement visibility, and then um, and also uh, this uh, future U turn or left turn movement as well. So that's those are some of the limitations on, on the tree. We might be able to plant a few, but it's not going to be that tree lined um, uh, field that you have uh, maybe along Trail Drive or some other some other corridors. Uh, Jeff, can you unmute uh, Michael Bennett? Can you hear me? Yes. He's unmuted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I I understand that we we we're not going to end up with a, a tree lined boulevard, but I would encourage us for the sake of making this uh, a, a place where we maybe slow down traffic a little bit that the trees are helpful for that, uh, for a place that feels a little bit more pleasant. Uh, and and like I said, for a, a kind of one-time opportunity to sort of improve this corridor, I would encourage us to do everything we can to find a way to have trees. I understand that 
trees and and traffic uh, control and traffic uh, 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 sort of uh, regulations don't necessarily play well together. But I think this feels like a freeway today. And I'm afraid that we're gonna do all this work and spend this money, and it's still gonna feel too much like a freeway. And so I would encourage us to do all we can. I think the community and the landowners around it would encourage you to try to find every way you can uh, to, it, to, to green this up as much as you can. I don't know if the lanes are, are, are still uh, the same width that they are today or if they could be tightened up a little bit. Uh, so I would just encourage us to look at all those kind of things. That's a good point you bring up, Michael. The lanes would be slightly narrower. We're going to uh, we're going to narrow them down to 11 feet. So some of them are 11 feet today, but some of them are probably 12 feet. So we are they're going to be 11 feet. So it's going to be a little tighter. So that would help with the uh, the uh, traffic calming uh, desire. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. Uh, we we can talk about you know uh, maybe you know if we can uh, make the funding if we can get uh, stakeholders to uh, pitch in and augment the funding. We can probably consider that option. Well, let 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 us know as soon as you can, and we will do all that we can to make okay. sure that we've expended all the possibilities there. Yeah. So what what I'll do is I will uh, sort of uh, round up my parks faults again and. Uh, Aaron, you know, Cobb Fenley and our landscape uh, architect and sort of have that conversation again with the financial consideration, you know, with the suggestion in mind. And then okay, we'll, yeah, we'll I hope you understand it's one thing if you just say no. It's another thing where you say if you can come up with I'm making numbers up a hundred thousand dollars, then if we if we if we try and we can't do it, that's one thing. It's another thing just to say we we, we weren't given the opportunity. Right, I, I understand. Yeah, we'll just look at you know what the what the spatial constraints are and invisibility constraints are, and then come up with the possibility, and then come up with potential costs and get back with the CDC. No, that that'd be great. Appreciate it. Perfect. And, and thank you guys for giving us the chance to hear all of this tonight and to to and to weigh in on this. Oh, much, absolutely. Much appreciated. There's a comment that says, uh, that's from our council member, we greatly improved the area of tech over to fix the beat up curves on both sides of I-30. We can talk to TechSot about that. Um, I don't know how much clout I have with TechSud, but uh, we'll 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 talk talk to them, especially when we're doing both. Uh, when we do phase two, TechSud will be involved because they they it'll be federal funding, and so TechSud would be uh, involved in the uh, sort of the monitoring of the of the project. This question about trees along the sidewalks is not in the median. There are no new trees. New trees in the project, correct? So, yeah, as we discussed, we'll we'll, we'll uh, reconsider the uh, trees in the median, but there are no trees along the sidewalks. There's very little room. We we barely have room to widen some of the sidewalks, so um, there won't be any trees along the sidewalks. So we have some takers, trademark is willing to put up as much money as needed. Um, that, that's not what the comment says, but <laughs> I'm just speaking on Kathy here. Hey, Kathy. <laughs> so we'll quantify the cost and come back to the CDC and uh, probably include trademark in it. Yeah, we understand trees are great in the sidewalk when we have a very wide parkway. The parkway is what we designate as uh, from the curb to the right of way. But the parkway is really limited here, especially when we have uh, street, the street lights are going to be in the parkway as well. We have sidewalks that we need to, uh, that we would prefer to widen for bicycles to use and, and more pedestrians to, to use. 
Um, we have to provide uh, bus stops that are ADA compliant. That requires a, 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 a greater width of the sidewalks. So it's a little it's a little more challenging to put the trees on the parkway than than it is on the uh, in the median. I just had one comment that I was going to make, and I know this might be a little anecdotal. This is Councilwoman Zeta. Um, the question was raised about what people would walk from H Supply to Banana to um, Banana Republic, and I can tell you that I do that today, and many of us are waiting with bated breath to be able to walk this area and not have to get in our cars and drive from one parking lot to another parking lot. Um, this whole area with it, the way it stands right now, you know, you feel like you're taking your life into your hands to cross university. Um, but I think that this will make it all of it more interconnected, which I think will benefit all of the businesses in the area. Um, I even go so far as to take the number seven bus here and walk around and take it back or walk home um, all the way up to the other side of TCU. So I think there are a lot of people that are really excited about making areas in Fort Worth more walkable. Um, and I am definitely one of them. So I appreciate this effort. Absolutely. Maybe someday we'll have a trolley up and down the university and people will, you know, drop off people at uh, all the university drive. Yeah, I would have to say that the number seven bus only running once an hour is a bit of a challenge for taking public transit on this corridor, but hopefully we'll make some improvements there as well. Yeah, as they say, build it and they will come, right? And if, you, if we don't have the facilities, we're not gonna we're not gonna uh, promote uh, pedestrian and, and, and bicycle movement. Uh, there's a question: Can you outline the aspects of this plan that will reduce accidents from I-30 to the Trina River? River? So most of the accidents um, identified have been um, left turn movement, um, even that it is a, a two-way uh, left turn lane. So the reduction, the, the potential of reduction of accidents comes from the addition of the, uh, of the left, of the uh, median. That is the last question for now. I'm going to give everybody a couple of minutes if they haven't, if you haven't been able to ask a question. If not, we will adjourn in a couple of minutes. I want to thank Council Member Zeta for joining us and uh, you know providing her insight as well. Thank you very much. Okay, with no more questions, I thank you everybody for your attendance. And again, we'll have another one of these, uh, hopefully before we start construction, but we will get back with the CDC on the on the three matters. Thank you very much, and, uh, Jeff, and thank you, guest member. Jeff and uh, Aaron, if I can talk to you for a second. Thank you, guys. Have Bye. A, have a good night, everybody.